In this video, I'm going to go over set comprehension, uh, zips, zip function, and also dictionary comprehension. Right. So first off, we'll get into set comprehension, and I'll show a reason why it might be useful to uh, just do set comprehension. So we'll get two lists. We'll call the first list L1. We'll just I don't know, put a few numbers into it, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, and 9, right? Now you can see that there's two 8s in there. Actually, I'll put another 5 in there. So there's two 8s and two 5s. If we were to convert this list into a set, we should actually have um, a set that only contains 1, 5, and 1, 8, because sets can't have duplicates, right? Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can use the set keyword and we can put some parenthesis and inside of that we can either just put l1 the variable name or we can put x for x in l1 right and this is obviously the comprehension right this is the same more or less as list comprehension right so if i run that we should get the set of this and you can see there's only one five and only one eight right here we've used two lines, but you're probably thinking, well, this is actually kind of useless. You know, why why would I want to use this? Because all I actually have to do here is just put set in L1. And it's still going to take me two lines of code to do this, but this is going to be a little bit easier than iterating over every single item. Um, because we just get the set the list. The variable name is shorter than writing out X for X in L1. So why wouldn't I do this? Okay, in this situation, it makes more sense to use set and then the actual list name rather than x for x in list name, obviously. Now let's look at the case where we make, let's say, L2. We say that L2 is equal to x for x in range. And we're going to say minus 3 four All right are we going to say x squared shall we we'll say x squared yeah so x to the power of two for x in range minus three to four All right we'll have a little look at this uh this variable here by the way i'm not going to print variables i'm not going to store everything into a variable anymore because you guys are now experienced professionals and you can see that they've got duplicate values here right so we might want to put this into a set um, just in order to get rid of these duplicate values, right? So I can actually just do this here, set L2, piece of cake, right? That would take me two lines. It would take me the list line and the set line, right? However, instead of, if we don't need this list, we just need the set of this list, um, then we don't actually have to make this list. And we can do everything in one line. We can just put set x to the power of 2 for x in range minus 3 to 4. Okay. And we get the same set returned. Now, the only difference here is that instead of, you know, making a list and then getting the set of that list, we just get the set of this comprehension that we've put in here by putting the comprehension inside of the set, right? That's it, that's pretty much all there is to set comprehension. For the most, it won't save you much time. You probably won't use it that often, but you know, it exists and it can save you time in some situations. Next thing we're going to get into is zip. So we're going to say that we want to zip L1 and L2 together. So we're gonna say Z1 is equal to zip, then inside of here, we use two iterables. In this case, I'm going to use two lists. I'm going to say L1 and L2, right? Quite simple. And let's return Z1. Let's see what we get. Actually, I'll return it here instead of down there. So we'll put Z1. Unfortunately, we just get a zip object, but it doesn't tell us anything about uh, what's in it, right? So we can actually print a list of this zip, I believe. So we'll print a list of Z1. 
and it returns all of those values, right? Returns all of those values. So yeah, that's that's kind of cool, I guess. You know, we've got this all in tuples here. So we've got the tuple of the five uh, to the zero, to, sorry, to the nine, uh, the six to the four, the seven to the one, the eight to the zero, uh, the eight to the one here, the nine to the four here, and the five to the nine, right? Now, one thing you might want to know is that these two lists are actually of the same size. They have seven items in them each. You can see this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items, and so does this. What do you think will happen if we make two lists of different lengths and zip them together? So we're going to say list three is equal to, I'm just going to say it's equal to one, two, three. I'm going to say that list four is equal to one, two, three, four, five, right? And then we're going to return a list of this set of two, with, with a set of tuples uh, in the zipped up version of this. So we can put our zip in there. I'm going to say L3. L4, no problem. Just had to put all of that in there. And you can actually see that you only get as far as the smallest iterable. So you get the 1 to the 1, the 2 to the 2, and the 3 to the 3. But because this, this first iterable only has three items in it, you can only have three sets of tuples. So you can only have as many tuples as the smallest item will permit, the uh, or the iterable with the least amount of iterable items in it will permit. And they'll be given in a one-to-one -one ratio. So it'll be x for x in until you end up with your limit there, right? So these two don't get recorded in the zip. It's good to remember that just for when you're playing around with zips because sometimes you might zip two things together thinking that you've got everything zipped together and the zips just dealt with that. But it isn't that case. It'll actually cut short bits that can't be fit together, that can't be put in a one-to-one -one tuple relationship. So it's good to uh, bear that in mind, right? Now, we can also actually make uh, dictionaries from these zips. So we can say, for example, dict of zip. Um, we'll say dict of zip L1 L2. Let's see what gets returned. And you can see we get that same thing as this tuple, except we've got a key value pairing in a dictionary here. Yeah. For some reason, there's no 8 to 0. Not so sure why that is. Um, but Okay, and there's not a second 5-9. Again, no idea why that is, but it just is that way, so whatever. And we'll try it again. We'll try dict with zip. I'll say L3 and L4. Let's see what we get there. We've got the 1-to-1, one one, the 2-to-2, two two, and the 3-to-3 three three there, right? I imagine that this can't take zero arguments and then for some reason this five nines cut off oh no that's not it at all yeah i know why it is you're not allowed duplicate keys so it's got rid of the five here because that's a duplicate key value pairing and it's just here already and you don't have this eight here because that's a duplicate of this eight right so you can't have duplicate keys and in this one you can see that it's exactly you know what are the result that we got out returning this zip here so that's one way that you can make a dictionary by zipping two lists together and converting that into a dictionary. Quite simple, right? Now, that's it for zip. The zip, is the zip function is just there for, I don't know, just if you want to manipulate uh, that zip function for whatever reason. Just if you want to put two lists together or two iterables together at the same length and mess around with them. It's just an easy format to manipulate, right? Now, Let's get on to dictionary comprehension. So let's say that we want to make a dictionary using a zip, using a comprehension. So we're going to say that dict1, the first dictionary, is equal to, and we've got to use these curly brackets. I'm going to say key val for key 
val in, let's say zip, and we're going to say, I don't know, zip of L3, L4 there. And now let's return this dictionary and see what we get. Oh, dict1, that's what we're returning. And we get this as above, okay? So you can see that it's used for the key, it's used L3, and for the value, it's used L4. So it says that this dictionary is equivalent to key value for key and value inside of this zip. And key is the first item, so that's going to be L3. And value being the second item will be taken from L4. And you can see the key zip is equivalent there. Maybe this isn't the best um, best demonstration. Maybe it's better to demonstrate that. So I'm going to do that. Just because you can't distinguish between L3 and L4 here. So I'm just going to reaffirm that it is what I've said it is. That it is a key and a value association. So we say key val for key slash value in zip and we're going to say l1 l2 and we should get this once again right so i'm going to run that and then i'm going to have a look at dict2 just quickly and you can see we get five nine at six four seven one eight one nine four the pairing that you'd expect the pairing l1 to l2 in a dictionary right and you can see that key because that's the first argument or the first uh, sort of thing that we're going to insert into the dictionary will come from the first argument of the zip and val will come from the second argument of the zip. So the first item is going to be the key of the dictionary. We don't have to call it key or val, by the way. And then the second item is going to be val. So I'll demonstrate that again, but I'll use different uh, names just so you don't get confused. And we're going to say ll is the first item and then we're going to say ol is the second item we're going to say for ll ol in zip l1 l2 right and if i return that you'll see that we get the exact same dictionary as before i return that there and it's exactly the same item but you're probably looking at this and thinking well why would I assign it this way when I could just put dict1 is equal to dict zip l1 l2? And to be honest, you probably wouldn't want to mess around with this. It's just a very long winded way of making a dictionary compared to just this simple dict zip, right? So it's easier to make a dict of a zip rather than to do this, okay? So you're probably thinking with comprehensions, well, it's kind of not worth doing. And in a sense, that may be true, because you can make a comprehension based on two lists like this. But there are other ways that you can make dictionaries that might make sense. So I'm going to say that dict form is equal to, and we're going to say x to the power of 2 and x for x in range. And we're going to say 0 to 5 right let's see what we get there so we get four we got zero to zero one to one four to two nine to three sixteen to four and you can see that we've dynamically assigned all of these values now we could obviously get a list, make one list, and then make uh, another list, and one list containing x squared, and then another list containing x. But we might have to make a for loop for that. It might be costly to calculate. And you can see it's just easier to do all that inside of a dictionary comprehension. We can also make one-to-one -one dictionary comprehensions, but these aren't really necessary. So we can say x to x for x in range we'll say 1 to 7 and then we'll just return that dict 5 and what you'll get is this 1 to 1 ratio now of course you can actually if you wanted a list that just had all the values from range 1 to 7 you could pretty much use that list and you could just put it into a zip twice you know in fact 
let's do that shall we so we'll make a list called l5 and we'll say that it's equal to we'll say one two three four five six right i'm going to say that dict six is equal to or in fact we're just going to say that dict six is equal to dict zip l5 l5 right let's just run that and now if i show you dict six you'll see that it's exactly the same as dict five there so in some cases it makes sense to use a dictionary comprehension for example as well if you didn't want this list it would just be easy to make a dictionary comprehension if you only want the dictionary um if you're going to zip two items together and make a, lit, a dictionary from that zip it doesn't really always make sense to make to uh, do that via comprehension there may be cases where you have to where uh, the specific parameters that stop you from doing this or where it's required to do this maybe in a for loop or some very strange function so there might be reasons why you would want to do this kind of comprehension anyway uh, but generally this sort of comprehension uh, isn't necessary you can just do this and assign this to a variable but then when you want to do something like uh, an exponential in a range uh, to the original value as you know key value pairs then yeah it absolutely makes sense to do a comprehension rather than to make two separate lists that's pretty much it really there's nothing else to uh, comprehensions than this I mean I'm sure there's some quite complex functions you can make with them but the purpose of this video isn't to show you that it's just to show you you know the basics of set and dictionary comprehensions and also zip you know as i said you can use zip to just put together a couple of arrays in a one-to-one -one arrangement if they allow it right i hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching